Hi there, in my last video I asked people for uh, suggestions on how to hold the uh, crank gear onto the crankshaft and I received loads of suggestions which I really appreciate and I'll just show you what I decided upon. So just to recap, the problem I've got is the crank gear is held on by a, a dowel pin which is a sixteenth of an inch in diameter. Now the, the crank gear I made the teeth are a lot finer than in, in the original drawing. Um, so I'm concerned that if I drill through it, I'm going to damage the teeth. Now I've got loads of suggestions um, suggesting I cut a keyway. Uh, but I think the problem with that is the, the crank gear, it butts up against the main bearing, which is fine on this side. Um, but there's a gap here to allow this governor spool to go up and down. So if I put a keyway in there, and I, I guess if I don't lock tight it or something like that, potentially this, this gear could come off uh, and move towards the left. So I was thinking about um, maybe making a, a new gear and putting a, a, an eighth of an inch boss on it. Um, and uh, Richard Boucher, um, I was in contact with and uh, by the way he's making a really nice three and a half inch gauge Frodo engine uh, and he'll be really happy when, when that's complete. I'll show you a quick picture of it. Anyway Richard also um, sent me a picture of uh, this area of, of his odds and ends engine. And uh, it, it looks definitely feasible to for me to make um, a gear like that with a boss on it, an eighth of an inch wide, and to uh, modify the main bearing by uh, reducing this by an, eight, an eighth of an inch. So I think that's the option I'm going to go with. Now, Howard Osborne also uh, suggested a really interesting uh, solution, but his solution only works, I think, if the bear, if if the gear is actually sort of sat on the end of a shaft. Um, but I'll show you a quick picture of that because some people might be interested, and it's uh, probably a method I'll use in the future if I if I need to. So anyway, I, I have made um, a gear like that with a boss on it and a couple of holes for some grub screws and I'm pretty happy that will work uh, but just to keep my options open I did make another gear um, sort of similar to, to the drawing with an eighth of an inch sorry a sixteenth of an inch hole right through it but the way I approached that was I made the blank then drilled a hole through and then I cut the teeth um, so that, that's worked out really well but the, the problem I think with that is once I put it on the crankshaft obviously I need to start drilling through again I'm, I'm just a bit concerned that it would cause uh, damage to the teeth so I've convinced myself I'm going to go with that option and in this video I'm going to make the conrod okay so the drawing suggests using tempered aluminium for the conrod but I've not got any of that and the drawing also suggests drilling and reaming the small end and the big end uh, directly into the aluminium. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some bronze bushes. Um, so first of all what I need to do is um, super glue the big end cap onto the main piece. Then I'll drill and tap some 4 by 40 holes then uh, having done that I'll break the super glue join I'll reattach it with the bolts and then I can commence drilling and reaming the big end and the small end okay so I've uh, found the center of the piece on the X and Y axes and uh, just marked it with a center drill then I've moved the uh, X axis that way 0.344 of an inch and what I need to do first of all is just open up uh, this cap uh, with a 4 b 
40 UNC clearance drill which is a an eighth of an inch Now the tap-in drill going to a depth of about 0.35 of an inch. Now I need to open it up a bit with this slot drill. Well that seems to have worked out okay, I put a couple of witness marks on here before I broke the um, super glue and uh, I cleaned the faces up with some acetone and uh, bolted it back together. So now what I need to do is to drill and ream the little end, uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch to take um, a bush I'm going to make and drill and ream the big end to uh, half an inch to again to take a well it'll be a split end bush for the big end that I need to make as well. So having thought about it overnight I've decided to um, reduce the width of this down to the uh, widest dimension so I need to take about 31 thou off each side. So I've just checked by turning the spindle with this uh, centre drill in that I'm spot on the line so I need to centre drill and then uh, open it up and uh, ream it to half an inch. So I've worked my way up a couple of drill sizes and now this is 31 sixty-fourths.
Okay, so for the small end, I need to move the table this way um, 4 and 5 sixteenths of an inch. And then I need to uh, centre drill and drill and ream to 5 sixteenths of an inch. But I'll do all that off camera. Okay, so I've got an edge stop on here, and that allows me to take the conrod out of the vise and um, go over the lathe, make the bushes and fit the bushes, then come back here and fit it in exactly the same position. So then I can drill and ream um, the proper size holes. And uh, I'm just going to leave the mill as it is. I'm not going to change any of the settings. So the little end bearing is just uh, simply a, a piece of phosphor bronze turned down to fit in the hole. So I'll uh, glue that in with some Loctite 638. So the big end is uh, slightly different because uh, it's got to be a, a split end bushing here. And uh, it's a good job I've got another mill because um, I need to use a slitting saw to cut some of this in half. Now because I'm going to um, rejoin this top half with the bottom half and machine it in the lathe, if I cut exactly on the centre line um, it won't work out right. Um, one of the halves will be slightly um, bigger than the other one. So what I need to do is to get it on the centre line and um, this cutter is 0.9 of a millimetre uh, thickness. So I need to move it up 0.45 of a millimetre so that the bottom of this cutting face is actually directly on the centre line. Well this is going to take a while so I'll get back to you once I've completed it. So you can probably see how uh, the cut is offset to the right hand side. So now I need to uh, cut that right piece off. Okay so I've just cleaned the faces up and now what I need to do is to uh, solder them together like that. Yeah, it's too much of a heat sink, so I'm going to have to use normal solder instead of silver solder. So the soldering went okay I think, so I need to face this off and then reduce this down to half an inch in diameter.
Well, actually, I've decided to go with that. So that. Uh, slides on like that and then once the cap is tightened up it just nips it up nicely so I'm happy with that so I've just chopped it off using the bandsaw and I'm just facing the end off Okay, so the big end bush is a, is a good fit. Uh, in fact, when the cap end is uh, bolted up, it, it, it tightens up quite nicely. But what I'll do um, when I'm for drilling out, I'm just going to put a little bit of Loctite 638 on there just to hold it in place. Um, and uh, I'll use some Loctite 638 on the little end as well. So the mill hasn't been disturbed. And it, now it's just a matter of um, centre drilling and uh, drilling and reaming to the uh, right diameter. But I'll do all that off camera. So off camera I uh, melted the solder and split the bush. And uh, I've just stuck it in here uh, using a little bit, uh, just a dab of Loctite. So it's nice and secure. And uh, I bolted it up and used this piece of uh, precision 3 eighths of an inch rod and it turns really nice so I'm very happy with the results so far so what I need to do now on the mill is to uh, start machining some of this aluminium out so we can uh, make the shape so what I've done is uh, I've drilled some six millimeter holes to define the outside edge of the taper and I've put the drill bits back through and if I rest it on top of these parallels, push it down, and then tighten the vise up. The line I need to cut to is uh, perfectly parallel with the top of the vise.
well that's looking pretty good so what I'll do now is I'll just uh, turn it round in the vise and repeat the same process on the other side but I'll do all that off camera well that's starting to look okay and what I need to do now is to reduce the width of that by taking 92 thou off each side brings it down to uh, a quarter of an inch So now I think I need to do some work on the rotary table. Okay, so to machine a radius on each of these ends um, using the rotary table, first of all I obviously need to centre the rotary table on the mill. Once I've done that I need to rotate an end around the centre point of the table. Now. Uh, my rotary table has got an MT2 taper on it. So what I've just done is I got this blank here. I think I got it from Archeo Rotrade. And I machined it down because it was quite long on this end. And uh, I drilled and tapped um, M6 thread. Having done that, I've then made some little mandrels so my idea is that I'll be able to this mandrel here I've machined so it's got an M6 thread on the end so screw that in I think that's an M3 uh, put a spacer washer on the bottom so I can machine right down to the edge and then uh, put another washer on with a bolt to hold it in place so that's sort of my plan and then once I slot that into the centre of the table I can then support this end here on some one two three blocks I'm going to use exactly the same approach the small end because I've made a different size mandrel this one obviously an M6 thread on I think this is an M2 thread here so put a spacer on put that on Um, and bolt it down like that so that's my plan so we'll go over to the mill and uh, give it a try ok so off camera I realised that the small end needed to be uh, 3 eighths of an inch wide so I've just taken 30 thou off the top and the bottom uh, using my mini mill. Now I've bolted it to this MT2 blank which I showed earlier and um, I've set these one two three blocks up here and I've bolted them to the table using T-nuts and I've actually bolted the blocks together as well so that's pretty rock solid and uh, a local engineering company um, was recently throwing loads of stuff out and uh, I found in it in, in all of the rubbish um, a partial set of um, slip gauges now I, I wouldn't use the slip gauges for accurate measurement uh, but they're pretty good for reasonably accurate packing so I've put one of those in there and then bolted it down now I had originally centered the table and uh, I've since moved the y-axis this way by 
Uh, first of all, uh, 0.1875, which is 3 sixteenths, which gives me um, the that edge on the centre, because this is a 3 eighths of an inch bit. And then I've moved it again, uh, 7 30 seconds, because, because the diameter of this needs to be um, 7 sixteenths. So that now has put me on the position where the final um, circumference will be. So I've set the DRO to zero and what I'll do is I'll move the table out and uh, start cutting and work my way to that zero point. So I think I'm just going to have to change this end mill because um, it's uh, quite wide diameter wise. I'll go for a thinner one um, so I can get in these corners here. But I'll do that bit off camera. very happy the way that uh, little ends turned out and I need to follow a similar process for the big end but I'll do that one off camera. Well I just thought I'd show you uh, how this is working out it's a matter of milling the circumference down to that depth there. Just missing the bolts. So once I've once I've got it down to uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter, I'll uh, switch it round and uh, do the other side. But I'll do that bit off camera. Well, I must say I'm really happy with the way this uh, little mandrel holder worked out on the uh, rotary table. Um, in the past I've used probably something like that, which is a, a collet chuck that's got an MT2 taper on it. Uh, the only problem with that is uh, it holds the workpiece quite high off the table, so securing the workpiece is sometimes quite a bit fiddly and cumbersome. Uh, but with this, with me making it the thickness of a 123 block, it's a lot easier to uh, secure the piece. Um, so like I say I'm pretty chuffed with the way that turned out. Um, now in terms of the con rod, um, I'm, I think it was the right decision for me to uh, put some bronze bushes in here. I just didn't like, like the idea of uh, just running it on aluminium. Um, and uh, I, I ended up hand filing the end here because uh, I couldn't work out how to uh, do that on the rotary table. And the only outstanding issue I've got is an oil hole, but I'm going to leave that later once I've decided what I'm going to put in there, my, you know, what type of a, an oil, if any. Um, but anyway, 
I hope you uh, found the video of interest and um, I hope to see you later.